Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Slayer Talk. We have a new theme song, everybody. My name is Mark. With me as always is my fiance, Carol. How are you doing today, Carol? Hey, what's up? Not much. It's been a a good week here. It is uh, December 8th, 1998. It is. And do you have a wish, Carol? Hmm. Um, nothing as fun as the wish in this episode. Are you a say. woman scorned? I better not be. Well, if it's you, kind of up to you. If you were a woman <clears throat> scorned, you would get a wish from, uh, Susan Keats from <laughs> 90210. It's so weird to see her in another show. It's so funny that she's pay- playing like the patron demon of, uh, women scorned yeah. when she was scorned by, uh, Brandon. She was scorned by Brandon? I don't remember. How did she how'd she leave? I, I think she kind of scorned him, actually. She went back to her ex or whatever. I feel... So, I I feel like maybe this is where the pile of bodies is. <laughs> uh, Brandon, like, kills the women, <laughs> throws them on the pile of bodies in the desert, but the desert is on top of a hellmouth that leads to <laughs> Sunny Day. There you go. <laughs> Has we Noxie did it. Has girl been in here yet? Who? Noxima girl. I feel like Noxima no. girl is going to be here. Noxima girl would be a good addition to... Yeah. She was in that urban legend movie we did. That's where we saw her. Yeah. I knew we saw her somewhere. Maybe that's what he's doing. That Like, this hell mouth just leads to different, you know, I don't know, terrible <laughs> movies and TV shows. Right. Hey, wait. This and isn't some a terrible ones. TV show. No, no. Buffy's good. Watch what you say about Buffy. Wow. <laughs> But the wish, Carol, tell yeah. us about the wish. So, okay. So Cordelia in last episode got impaled when she was running away from... And not the good kind of impaled. No. No, I, I have a feeling she did get impaled that way many times, by Xander. Yeah. Which makes this so much worse. <laughs> but she was running away from Xander and Willow kissing and fell and got impaled. Mm-hmm. And she's healing from that. Yeah. And Xander is an asshole. Yeah. And just won't leave her alone. Just keeps calling her house. Like, incessantly, time again and again. Like, she is hurt. Le- she doesn't want to hear your fucking voice. Exactly. I mean, it's just, like, disgusting. Um, and then, also, Willow, like, she's not as bad. but No, she- but she's, like, stalking, uh, what's his name, Seth Green's locker. Yeah, and what I think is really fucked up is that Willow and Xander are hanging out together, lamenting what happened and trying to get their exes back. Yeah. You guys wanted to be all up in each other's shit, so mm-hmm. why don't you just be together instead of trying to get your exes back? Like, exactly. what is happening? I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense. They should just be together. Yeah. But, anyway, she's still healing um, physically and obviously emotionally. Mm-hmm. She's very upset. Yeah. And... um. She finally goes back to school, and she walks up to her old group of friends. And Who's that- she? Cordelia. Okay, there you go. Why? Because you talked about Cordelia, you talked about Willow, um, and now you're just saying she. Well, I said healing. Okay. Whatever. Did you guys get that from context clues? I hope so. Our audience is smart. Okay. Not saying they're not smart, I'm just saying maybe be a little more clear in your speech. So... The other, the other popular girl, uh, what the fuck is her name? I don't remember any of the names of any of these generic popular people, but <laughs> I don't remember her name either. But Tiffany, some blonde Barbie girl, um, is all like, "Oh my gosh, you know, so glad you finally got rid of Xander and blah blah blah." And she's like, "You know what? We have the best new guy for you." Yeah. And and Cordelia looks so relieved, mm-hmm. and I feel so bad for her. Yeah, they walk her over to some dork on the stairs. Yeah. Like, oh, hey, he, he'd definitely be right for you. And, mm-hmm. like, laugh at her and walk away. Which is mean to both of them. Yeah, exactly. Because they're acting like he's some kind of, like, I don't know, gross thing. Yeah, he seemed fine. Yeah. Um, no, not your type, huh? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Didn't really pay that much attention to him. Should have taken his shirt off, I guess. I guess. See. I guess so. <laughs> anyway. Um... So one of these girls who was new in the group peels mm-hmm. off to talk to Cordelia. And Cordelia's like, you know, get the fuck away from me. Mm-hmm. Because she thinks she's going to make fun of her more. And she's like, no, no, you know, I feel really bad for you. You know, you, you've been hurt. You know, talk about it. 
And she's like, I bet you wish, uh, you know, this or that. And she's like, I wish that Buffy had never come to Sunnydale. Before she does that, though, she gives her a necklace. Oh, yeah. I heard about that. She puts around her neck. Yeah. Which is weird. It's like you just met this girl and she's giving you jewelry. Like, yeah. wouldn't you be like, wait a minute, maybe don't touch me? I don't know. <laughs> and a woman tried to put a necklace around me? Yeah, I think it'd be a little worse. <laughs> That's weird. But anyways, it like she it gets teleported. It's like it's a wonderful life. We get to see uh, what life would be like if Buffy had never come to Sunnydale. And I liked this episode a lot. Mm-hmm. I would have liked maybe living in this world a little bit more. Okay. Like a little bit more through Cordelia's eyes. We get, I know it's like that there's a limited amount of time you yeah. know, and everything. Um, but I like, I wish not even more in this world necessarily because we, you know, we're here for the rest of the episode, mm-hmm. but I guess maybe I wish it was a bit of a slower burn of what was going on. Sure. Because. She gets teleported to this new world. She doesn't, you know, she's like, she realizes right away. She's like, oh, Buffy never came, you know, and everything and stuff. And she goes to class and class is like two thirds empty. Yeah. And I got it right away. I'm like, oh, all those people would be dead <laughs> if Buffy weren't here because she was, you know, there to stop the vampires from killing so many of the people. Right. And, you know, I get it right away. Cordelia doesn't. Well, you know, she's really smart book wise. Yeah. But I don't think she's got the best, like, no. street smarts or whatever. Not at all. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so she doesn't really pick up on it right away, and her friends are her friends again. She's still, like, Queen Bee or whatever. But they're all, like, oh, you're wearing bright colors. Like, that's very daring of you. And yeah, stuff. everybody's wearing black. Um, But, yeah, like, I wish there was... I wish it built up a little bit more. Like she went, like we went through like the whole school mm-hmm. day or something like that, and like little, I, because I, I thought that was fun to me. Yeah, like the 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 class being mostly empty. That was a fun little like. Oh, of course that would be different. I would have liked to have seen a few, a few different things. <clears throat> right? Would the principal be the same? Would yeah. The principal be Good different. Question. Would the mayor still be? In charge. I, I would like to have seen some differences. Maybe they could have brought old mayor back. Or, I mean, not mayor. Old uh, principal yeah. back. The one that got eaten by dogs. That's true. Um, she mentioned wanting to go to the bronze. They're like, what are you talking about? Are you crazy? Yeah. Like, And then the parking lot was empty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no cars. And they were talking about a curfew. So, yeah. I mean, there were a few things. Why well, are there were no cars, though? I don't uh, understand that. They weren't allowed to drive. But why? I don't know. That makes no sense to me. Just because vampires come out at night, I get the curfew. Maybe because like kids like make out in their car and stuff like that, and they were getting turned into vampires that way. I guess nothing. Nothing's explained though. Like I mean, not we know it's because Buffy's not there, but there are, there's not a lot of explanations. One returning character we do get though is uh, I want an anointed one. Where's my anointed <laughs> yes, one? That was awesome. The master <laughs> comes back. Yeah. Well, Buffy didn't ever get rid of him. So yeah. And. Uh, Buffy, we find out later, is in fucking Ohio, which she's is in hilarious to me. So she's in her own hell mouth of her own. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, it's also a bad reality for Buffy. She's in Cleveland. She seems pretty. No not offense. Happy in this no episode. offense, Cleveland. Um, so Cordelia is like completely clueless. So she's walking around, even though it's like getting dark and yeah, like what the fuck, Cordelia? Yeah, get get smart, girl. Um, and she runs into Xander. Mm-hmm. And she's stupid about this, too. Yeah. Like, it's so obvious. Well, because so be, the- be, yeah, they're, they're her friends. She's like, well, what about, like, Xander and Willow? Are they fucking miserable in this world? And they're like, yeah, we guess. They're dead. Yeah. So she runs into Xander. You think she'd immediately be like, oh, fuck. Vampire. Yeah. And but she's, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, oh, I thought you were dead. They told me you were dead. Well, that's one way to look at it, Xander says. And she doesn't run. Yeah. And then Willow walks up, and Willow's all, like, gothed out in, like, black leather and stuff. And, I mean, like, I get your vampires now, but, come on, it's a little well, they're cliche. Not, they're not them, right? Like, Well, they're demons they're, are taking over their bodies. Yeah, yeah. so they're, they're literally, like, their personalities are, like, me. they have, like, access to their brains or something like that, so they're kind of similar-ish, but, like, they're, they're their own thing. Like, they're not like they were when they were alive. Right, right. So she's like, 
and they're, oh, and they're together. They're like making out and stuff. And she's like, mm-hmm. oh my God, this is an alternate reality and you two are still together. Yeah, and you're dead. So, and then it turns out like the bronze is just like the vampire hangout. Yeah, and like they have uh, the puppy there, what they call the puppy. <sighs> I don't like this. Which is Angel just chained up. Why? Because he has a soul, so they're mean to him. I guess, yeah. I mean, he did, he did say he was kind of like the vampire outcast, I guess. And he was trying to stop them, I assume. Sure. But yeah. At one point, though, <laughs> Court, uh, Willow goes, Willow goes down there, and she's like straddling him while he's trying to buck her off. Yeah. And she's like, I'm going to burn him. And then, like, Xander comes in, and you think like, oh, he's going to get jealous or whatever. And he's like, no, I just want to watch. I just want to watch you go. That's what he says. It's like, holy shit. Like, this turned way... Like, I don't know what Joss Sweden has going on (laughs) in his private life, but this turned way too, like... Like, disturbingly sexual. Yeah, suddenly we're in, like, Pulp Fiction, and it's the gimp. Like, Mm -hmm. it's not cool. Yeah, kind of, yeah. It's Buffy. Like, chill out. I mean, granted, people do get eaten in the show, so, I mean, I... Yeah. I guess it's just a dark show. (laughs) I guess so. But, yeah, it was weird. So, um, Cordelia says, like, we got to get Buffy here to help us. Buffy will be able to fix everything, which is hilarious. Well, because... we skipped something. Oh, we did. Sorry. Yeah. Because when she's talking to Xander and Willow, Xander's like, I'm going to fucking get her. And he goes to get her. Well, she does say to him, she's like, she's like, Buffy's supposed to be here. This wouldn't be happening or whatever. And he's like, the Slayer. Like, he's like, what the fuck? And um, so, like, they chase after her. They're going to kill her. And then Giles pulls up. Oh, with yeah. Oz and two people we don't know. Yeah, two random, I guess, replacement people. Yeah. But they have, they're just armed with crosses. And an uh, a, a, a arrow, like bow and arrow thing. Okay. I thought. A crossbow? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Buffy has that later. Oh, never mind. All they have is crosses. Well, that's not very good weaponry. No. <laughs> they it's shouldn't very be running around. very defensive in nature. <laughs> but they do. They save Cordelia. Yeah, they they have a van. It's the one time you want to get pulled into a van right, off the street. Right. Um, and she's like, "Giles, what the fuck?" And he's like, uh, "Yes, uh, hello, Cordelia." And he's she's like, um, "Perfect, Giles impersonation." Oh yeah. Really. And Amazing. she's like, "The uh, the Slayer's supposed to be here. You're supposed to be your watcher. What the fuck? Why are you here if she's not here?" Which is a question I asked. Yeah. Which they never answer. Well, he said, "Oh, how did you know I used to be a watcher?" What did he say used to be? Yeah. Oh, interesting. So something. So like, I guess if they're. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't either. It's not. It's not, <laughs> it's exactly, not explained. Yeah, yeah, it's not exactly explained. But um, yeah, she's uh, he's like, something's going on with you, Cordelia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's got that necklace and he recognizes the necklace. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, I almost forgot what happened to her, though. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, they go back to the library, which is still the library with all the stuff. I guess he's the jail. Dead. Yeah, he, well, he does. He has the cage of, of weapons that he's just allowed to keep open at a school. I it's don't understand. Weird. Yeah. Um, but he goes in there, the cage, and gets locked in by vampires. By Xander and Willow. Yeah. Because they talk to the master and they're like, yeah, we were going to fucking kill this old flame of mine. Or I used to have a crush on her. Uh, the, that stupid librarian messed it up. She was talking about the Slayer or whatever. And the master's like, what the fuck? She was talking about the Slayer and you just let her live? He was like, oh, they had crosses, you know? <laughs> and he's like, go fucking get her. Yeah. I thought he wanted to talk to her. I thought they were going to get her to bring her back. Oh. But instead, they just bite the fucking shit out of her. And they act all horny about it like it's a menage. Yeah, they do. They really do. It's fucked up. And and Giles has to watch, too. Like, this whole episode is really weird. <laughs> I mean, it's a good episode. an episode of Horny but, Creek, really. Right? I don't know. I feel like they could easily turn this into, like, you know, Smurf porn or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Um. <clears throat> so, she's dead. But he reckon, Giles gets out of the cage and recognizes this necklace around her mm. neck as something. Yeah, he's like, why don't we incinerate her and I'll steal her jewelry. Yeah, there are so many dead bodies that they just have a protocol to just burn them so they don't come back as vampires. Yeah. Wow. But he figures out 
that it's the wish demon's necklace or whatever. Not wish demon. Whatever. It's it's a wish demon. Yeah. Um, it's Susan Keats in a mask. <laughs> it is. Um, which is weird. But I'm trying to remember how Buffy gets there. Well, he calls. He calls her watcher. And he's like, hey, uh, yeah, you know, you should get, I need to talk to Buffy. Somebody mentioned her name. And the watcher presumably is like, yeah, she doesn't fucking check in with me. I don't know. She's in Cleveland. Fucking try there. And he's like, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff going on in Cleveland right now. And he's like, you know, we're on a Hellmouth or whatever. And the person on the other line presumably is like, yeah, what the fuck? Who gives a shit? And like hangs up the phone. So I guess she gets word somehow. Somehow. Because Giles is out on the street and about to get murdered because he's looking for evidence or clues or whatever. And Buffy saves him. Yeah. And she's there. And he's like, oh, Miss Summers. <laughs> and uh, so they, um, you know, they go back to the library and they have a conversation or whatever. And he's like, yeah, you were supposed to be here. I don't know. It's like, this is, it's a wish demon thing. And she's like, just tell me where they hang out and I'll kill all of them. So at the bronze, the master has created. It's not at the bronze. I knew that's what you were going to. I, I, I feel I, I think I know where you're going. You're talking about the factory, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's at a factory. Oh, OK. That's, probably, at, a, that's at a warehouse. It's not at the bronze. Probably where like uh, Spike stuff was, maybe. I guess because oh. she, she goes to the bronze and finds Angel. And Angel's like, she's like, where where are they? And he goes, they're at the warehouse okay. or whatever. Um, but yeah, so she saves Angel, even though she finds out he's a vampire. And she's like, oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Get the fuck away from me. And he's like, he opens up his shirt, takes off his shirt, you know. But he is horribly scarred. And says, hey, you know, if you don't believe me or whatever, that I'm a good person or a good vampire, uh, believe that I want to fucking kill them. Look what they did to me. And she's like, all right, so... She lets him out, and she's like, okay, let's go fucking get them. Where are they? He's like, they're at a warehouse. So they go to this warehouse. Now, if Buffy never showed up, this is what I think is hilarious about this episode. Hmm. If Buffy never showed up, the master's big vision <laughs> right, was to create an assembly line where you could just knock out a person, put them on there, and then instead of having the, the pleasure of biting them yourself, <laughs> it... it like tubes go in and suck all the blood out of this person. So you could get like what? Two glasses of wine, like blood wine or whatever. Cause that's what it looked like. He got one glass out of this whole person well, and she's like the, you know, uh, hunting people like one by one, not efficient. What, what are you going to, what the, how, okay, this is going to be efficient. What are you talking about? I don't know. It, it reminded me very much of a cartoon. It's the stupidest plan I have ever seen in my life. If he had said something like, here's a machine that will keep them alive and take out just enough blood Ooh. before they like, you know, and allow, like give them a period to like, you know, like replenish their blood. So that's like a, a, a never ending blood supply. That would be something. But like, that's not what this is. Yeah. It's just a less efficient way to get blood. It takes a lot more time. It's like, how much blood is in one person? Uh, I don't know, a couple of pints? Yeah, so I think more than that. But like, some, like, uh, like something like that, some quarts or pints or whatever. So there's obviously more than one glass of wine. and But that's the only thing we see that he gets. Well, because I, it, it had several taps on it, this machine. I yeah. feel like the blood was probably going into some kind of a, a storage area. that, would And you have to bring tapped. everyone there. Yeah. Like, it's so much less efficient. He's like, worldwide or whatever. Fuck you. <laughs> this is the stupidest plan ever. Agreed. But Buffy uh, goes there to, you know, stop him. Mm -hmm. And the prophecy lays yeah. out just the way it always does. Yeah. Buffy gets killed. Yeah, she so gets killed by the master. Even in this alternate universe, there would be a faith. Well, no. The one that came before her. Oh, yeah. What's her name? I don't, I remember. don't remember. But yeah, you're right. Um, I'm trying to remember how do they fix it, though. I remember Buffy died. Yeah, Buffy dies. She kills Xander. She kills Willow. Buffy dies. Angel dies. They all die in this giant battle. Right. Um, 
uh, Giles stays Oh, summons back. her. He summons the demon. He Yeah, he, like, he performs a spell, summons the wish demon, and she's like, you know what the fuck I do to men that, that summon me? I, I You know, I whatever. I, I don't know. It's vague. I don't ever say. And he's like, you gotta, you know, stop this. And she's like, fuck you. I'm not going to. <laughs> um, But the... There's something that happens to her. Like, like he said, like if- he crushes her necklace because, according to the prophecy, the way to defeat her is to destroy her power source. And they don't know what the power source is, but apparently, he just figures it out it's the necklace. But in or- once that happens, though, she's supposed to be like just return to human form. Correct. So he's essentially rendered her useless. Yes, and he he she, she says she says. You know, don't do that. Like, how do you know, like, it's going to be even better? Or, like, it's going to be better than this? And he was like, because it couldn't be fucking worse yeah, than this. because it has to be. And he smashes it. And then we flash back to the beginning of the episode where, you know, Susan Keats is giving her the necklace. And she's <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I wish Buffy wasn't here. And she's like, granted. And then she's like, or you know what? Bet you, but I wish Buffy was never born. Granted. Done. Uh, I wish that, you know, she, like, she keeps saying it. And she's like, yeah. what the fuck? So now she just has to live as Susan Keats for the rest of her life. Except I don't think her name's going to be Susan Keats. That Whatever. Would be <laughs> but yeah, can you imagine? You're like this all-powerful, like, demon. vengeance demon. Yeah. And now all of a sudden you're a high school student. What happens to women scorned? Nothing now? I guess. No I mean, justice for women scorned. I, I, I can't imagine that every woman scorned got a visit from her or the world would be a pretty fucked place. Yeah, I guess that's true. But basically, the episode doesn't do much other than show Cordelia that Buffy is not, you know, all bad. Yeah. Well, and she shouldn't really be angry at Buffy. She should be angry at Xander and Willow. Yeah. But she, why did she blame Buffy? I don't even know. She said that ever since Buffy got here, that's what, that's what started all this madness. Well, yeah, before Buffy got there, she was, you know, blissfully ignorant and popular. So, so yeah, but that's, uh, speaking of, uh, horrible unfairness, that's the episode for, for the <laughs> week. So you can write us at latefee1994 at AWOL.com. Yep. Check out our website at www.retrolatefee.com. Yep. And share the tapes with your friends. Right, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.